That's why I got this wheel. Sorry, 19,000 ringgit. Yeah. It was the wheels. Yeah. Oh my god! Welcome back to another video, guys. Today, with a very, very special guest, we have Melvin. Why are you so many Melvin Tan in the house, man. Hey, Malaysian local YouTuber. Hey, what's up, man? <laughs> a very expensive bike. We will get into that later. But Melvin, I would just like to thank you so much for your time, uh, for coming out. Hey, uh, thank you for calling out. Uh, thank you for reaching out. <laughs> yeah. Awesome, man. Uh, my viewers are very keen to know more about you, your bike. and uh, So, before we go there, can you just introduce yourself to my international audience who don't know who you are? Hey, people around the world on the interweb, my name is Melvin. I think uh, hopefully some of you might know me, but maybe not many might know me. But uh, I run a YouTube channel called Melvin Tan Cycling and I've been doing it for about what, one and a half years. I won't say it's successful, but I'm enjoying the journey. Um, so a bit of background about me. Uh, like if you actually watch some of my channel, I did say that uh, when you're on the weekend, do something that you love, a creative output. And if you can, make some money out of it, right? Don't waste your time just enjoying life. You know, sometimes every day it's all dollar and cent. So when I was really young, about 17 years old, I was a Sunday school teacher. And then the principal said, hey, Melvin, you're so good with kids. I want you to do clowning. So, okay. So I studied, I actually studied clowning and I got a certificate on clowning. So I did clowning for about close to about 13 years, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Did mission trips. I actually trained clowns. I did a lot of street magics and stuff like that. And this and that. And it was good income. I was earning close to about, working on Saturday, Sunday, I was earning close to about 5,000 ringgit a month cash. After that, I stopped because I got married and I wanted something different and my wife was a wedding photographer lah. so then I did wedding photography for about 10 years under the brand Melvin Tan Photography I was, it was quite good, I was doing close to about what, 30 projects a year uh, and I would, wanted to do full time uh, but I'm glad I didn't because uh, maybe God just said well that wasn't your direction right and then Covid came and it was challenging for a lot of my wedding photograph friends then I did cycling for about 4 years then I started a YouTube channel and I've been cycling for 6 years total and I am here where I am. What got you into cycling? Um, it wasn't a fad actually, it was my colleagues. Actually I started birdie, I was actually into folding because that time, I think about 8 years ago, all everyone was going the birdie craze, no, no not birdie, folding bike craze, right? So then I bought my first bike was a birdie and I cycled for about a year. Uh, then my daughter came out, then I sold that bike and I didn't cycle for 4 years. Then my colleagues uh, brought up cycling again and then they went to road bike. So. We all, you know, during work time, we also go bike shop, lah, right? Not work time, lunch time, lah, right? <laughs> because I, my, my boss, uh, my boss, <laughs> my boss might see this. <laughs> but lunch hours, lah, we go bike shop and all. Then we pick up road bike. Lah. So, yeah, then as a group, lah, I think end of the day, if you want to invest in cycling, pick it up as a group of friends. Lah. If you have a bunch of friends, right, memang senang, lah, easier. Lah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, um, on to the bike. Can you tell us more about this bike and uh, the components? I think before I go to the bike, let's talk about the why I why I picked up the stock before that. So my first bike was actually a second-hand bike. I actually got the titanium bike, which is, uh, what is it called, when, when Nicholas uh, Astros, which is the, the aero bike. And the uh, Van Nicholas bike was, was awesome. Uh, first thing, why did I pick up titanium? Because I did my research, nothing rides like titanium. And I told my wife, I'm going to buy an expensive bike. Uh, and I found second-hand, it's going to cost me about 8,000 ringgit, I told my wife. So I told my wife, I justified by saying that titanium bikes last forever. So one and a half years later, I bought a new bike and I sold the titanium bike. <laughs> 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 and I bought a carbon fiber frame, because everybody say carbon fiber is all performance, right? So okay, so I tried lah. So I bought a Chipolini Bond, secondhand as well, hmm. right? Um, and it was good, it was freaking fast. When I climbed Hulu Langat, I was all PR and when you pedal, it sprints, you pedal, it sprints. But when I did, when I did my first Audex with the Chipolini Bond, uh, oh my goodness. Hand pain, numb pain, shoulder pain, butt pain, uh, you know, even areas that never felt pain in your life before. I was like, hey, what kind of muscle group is that? I was, like, oh, yeah. I was introduced to stock uh, by one of my buddy Daniel, uh, if you're watching this, Daniel. Uh, so Daniel told me, um, stock frame is very interesting where Marcus Stock from Germany is also known as the guru of carbon fibers. He's well respected in the bike industry, right? So he said that, uh, why stocks are so expensive mainly because it's not just the material, it's the way they lay out the carbon and it's really comfortable. So I said, okay, let's try lah. So to be honest, stock is actually my first new bike. I never bought first uh, second-hand bike, I mean brand new bikes before, right? So I bought it, it was freaking comfortable. I tell you, I, I blew my mind. So I bought the frame only and I components, I move it into the new, uh, I bought the stock FS1 and the components went in and the Cipollini Bond, I sold the frame only lah. So then when I first rode the bike, uh, 
acceleration was if you can zoom in later to the bottom bracket right it's huge carbon material there um, so it's not gonna be a light frame because it's an aero bike and it's really stiff okay uh, but the, the the sprinting since air fast one until now uh, the sprinting is excellent and the best thing is air fast is an aero bike but it's actually really good on climbs when i did my climbs on the air fast one uh, it beat all my pr and until uh, uh, it's just amazing. Like, I just feel that sprinting and climbing on this frame is excellent regardless of the weight. Niche brand, I don't want to ride on the bike that everyone has uh, and the quality is good. And uh, Marcus Stock is, is my Facebook friend. Uh, so oh. how many, you know, if you buy a Specialized or whatever, right? He, he, the CEO won't friend you, bro. <laughs> so it's, yeah. So that's so, the attachment I have with this bike. Uh. Right. Before we even get to the bike, sorry, I forgot to mention this. I knew you or I, I watched your very first, uh, I mean, my, my encounter with your, your channel was through the Wenwex video. Oh, that's when so cool, Wenwex, right? yeah, when yes. Wenwex f first started coming out, I was Googling what was it and you were the first guy I think I came across doing Wenwex. Yeah. And uh, just now before we were talking, I was asking you whether Wenwex is one of the popular videos for you. Yeah, I think, I think it was more of, out of curiosity that got the popularity of the video because that time wax is relatively new la, especially wax application type uh, to the chain uh, but even though i was sponsored or given this and that right, i always tell the sponsors uh, hey, if you give me the product uh, okay bear in mind most of the product is either given to me or i paid partial but i always tell the brand owners right i'm going to be honest you know right if you look at a lot of youtubers the best thing about it is those youtubers will buy the product and say the good and bad no filter but to be honest, most agents can't do that because we don't have the USD power, you know. <laughs> I'm earning Ringgit Malaysia, you know. So, but fortunately, most of the sponsors still, you know, willing to give me the products and they still don't mind me being very honest with them. Mm. So, yeah. So, when I did the Wenwax, I also, I used it for about a year. I loved it. But at the end of it, I stopped using it because I felt that it was degrading the chain way too much. So, I also took, said that in the YouTube. La. So, so are you still popular. on Wax or Luke? Wax. <laughs> all the way, wax all the way. Right now, I'm testing the UFO ceramic speed. So far, so good. But to be fair, with Wen Wax, it's still the cleanest one. Every time I ride with the Wen Wax, uh, uh, when I touch the chain, it's just so clean. But maybe that's why it degrades the chain. Uh. It's just too clean. Uh. I don't know. Uh. But I'm using the UFO uh, ceramic speed now. Yeah. I'm keen to test the squirt sooner. And if you ask me what's the difference between those uh, wax application, uh, it's easy to apply because it's a lubrication style. But more the cool part is, it's easy to wash off. If let's say you touch the chain uh, and it's dirty, uh, you just have to use water and it just wash off your finger. Mm. It's not like lube. So it, it's, it's wonderful. Uh. Actually, another one was the molten wax. You know, that's the one you yeah, boil in the pot. So molten wax is, is just way too cumbersome because I'm not a fan of uh, opening up the chain, linking and unlinking. Uh, because you have to understand that even though a chain manufacturer tells you that you can use the bike for 200-300 km, right? I will stick to my discipline of 2 weeks or 200 km, I need to clean the whole thing and wash it because the groove set is way too expensive to, to, to test manufacturer's claim, I feel. Mm, okay, um, so yes, onto the frame, uh, if you may. Mm. Uh, run us through. Okay, um, where do we start? Uh? Let's, let's start from top to bottom. Uh. I'm using the Shimano Pro Style Saddle because it's just something that fits me. I think I went through close to about five saddles and this is the only one that fits me. It's because of the short nose and uh, the cutout and the wide frame here. Uh. It works for me. Um, it's about 145, 135 gram. It's the Shimano Pro Stealth Super Light. Retail at 1,400 ringgit. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, then of course, coming down to the frame, the entire frame is the stock FS Generation 1. Um, they launched the, eh, no, Generation 3, sorry. So I, I wrote their Generation 1 and I'm still riding on their Generation 3. This is how crazy I am. Last time people are, uh, you know, you, people won't buy aero bike because they're so afraid of the weight and the climbing. It's a lot of effort to put in. But to be honest, uh, if I were anybody who's watching this channel now, uh, either you get a hybrid aero all-rounder bike or get a pure aero bike because to be honest, right, 80% of your ride is flat road or downhill. You know, you buy a climbing bike, uh, but the hell, uh, your climbing only covers 10 or 20% of the ride. Yeah, so that's common sense for me lah, yeah. and no regret from there lah. So um, the the this bike uh, then okay so Air Force uh, Generation three, then going to the handlebar also is from stock, and then if you look at it later, I think you need to zoom in lah. You'll see the Wahoo uh, Element Bolt uh, Element Rome. This was sponsored by Wahoo uh, to me, which is uh, thank you Wahoo Ma Malaysia, and I modified the mount to fit my cat eye where it's hidden nicely. And I also hide my bell there. 
So it's really nicely hidden. I still have a very clean cockpit. Lah, and the bell is still really functional. Wait, this is a bell? How cool is that, right? <laughs> I should patent it, right? <laughs> yeah, so I was the first... Okay, bear in mind, I'm the first who did it. Lah. So, <laughs> so I hid the bell behind the, the light. Lah. So that's why people think that, hey, you don't have bell, God, it's hidden there. So this bell I bought from Shopee. Lah. Just find... If you go to Shopee, I think later you can check out. You just go find... Uh, Handlebar bell or mini bell, whatever. Lah. It's about 20 bucks. So I just cable tie and 3M stick it to it. It works perfectly, super loud. How do you ring it? Oh, let me try. <laughs> Sorry, I got to. Oh my god, yeah. it's so cool, so man. Cool. <laughs> so you don't want to show people you have a bell, you just hide it here. Lah. Super functional. <laughs> yeah, so, so, so that is one. Um, and then, of course, I have my moonlight. Is it called moonlight or moonshine? <laughs> Moonshine, sorry, I call it Moonlight. Moonlight is like alcohol in the US, right? <laughs> so I want on my YouTube account calling it uh, Moonlight. So I have Moonshine Light. So this is something that's very interesting because I was almost being sponsored by Olight. And this is something that I don't appreciate Olight. Because Olight, they, they give likes to KOLs, to ambassadors or whoever. I give you like, you promote our sales. That's what they always do. But then when I double check, right? Moonshine, is it Moonshine or Moonlight? I think it's just moon. Moon. No, no, it's not moon. No? Magic shine. Magic shine. Uh, totally <laughs> out. Okay, magic shine. I think magic shine is the manufacturer and Olight like just OEM it and pop and, and put in additional 30% margin to it. So then I told Olight, like, I think uh, it, you have to get your story right. Lah. You know, you say you're a big discount, but your price is the same if I buy magic shine. So then I just bought magic shine now. Mm. Uh, not the best light, but it works for me because it's small. I bought it because it's small. And it's uh, connected to the GoPro mount by Shimano. Lah. It's perfect for me. Going to the Cyclevision uh, bar tape, reflective one. Goes with the Bond shoes, Bond Helix, reflective as well. Then I have the uh, stock bottle cage weighing at 18 gram. Then touching to, of course, the SRAM Red AXX. Uh, this is something that's very interesting. Uh. Uh, when you look at my gearing, right, you think that Ayo Melvin, you're so weak, lah. <laughs> this is this is what they call like pussy cassette, pussy chainring, or some people call it uh, grandma chainring, you know, uh, nanny chainring, or whatever you call it, lah. But it's just being practical, okay? Don't judge me. If you are the person that cycles a lot, like me, uh, a lot of my friends who cycle with me weighs between 70, uh, 65 to maybe 75 kg. I'm probably the only guy that weighs 90 kg and all my friends like climbing route. Mm. So you see, I climb just not suffer, right? <laughs> <laughs> but because of that, I have to make my, my equipment suit my riding style. I do not create my equipment to suit your eyes. Mm. Okay? So when you do build a bike, don't build a bike because you think the pros are doing this or pros are doing that. Of course, nothing beats a slam stem. Uh, I slam it as far as I can go. I think I can go a bit lower, but I, I'm quite flexible that way, uh, by the way. So, um, so always build your bike according to, your, to how you ride it, not based on what your friends say. So my friends laugh at me. This is like pussy cassette and this and that, but it works for me, right? This is 11, if I'm not going to say, this is 1133, the biggest that SRAM AXS offers. Uh, and this is a 5334, the smallest, uh. This is the compact one. Hmm. It's ridiculous, but it works for me. Because I, I do a lot of climbing around. And uh, <clears throat> then, of course, going to the Xantis wheel. The Xantis wheel is very interesting. Why I went for Xantis is not because of the brand. Because, to be honest, no one knows Xantis, right? I, and it's not because of the design, okay? It's, like, yeah, it's actually because of the design. But the reason why I went for Xantis is because when I was doing my research, when I told myself I'm going to start a YouTube channel in order to be attractive, I need to have a kick-ass equipment to draw the viewers in, then get the viewers curious. So that's why when I got the Xantis wheel, I was doing my research. Korima weight limit, I think, was going at about 110, 100 kg. 100 kg. Uh, lightweight wheels was going at 90 kg. So I was looking at my options, right? So then uh, Mavic wheels are going about 120, impressive. But Mavic don't have any crazy designs. Then I saw Xantis. Xantis weight limit is 120 kg. Perfect for heavy riders like me. The best of all is 1.4 kg wheel set. 1.4 kg only for both, and it's a 42 mm all rounder. So, if I'm going to splurge 19,000 ringgit on just one wheel set, it's to carry my weight, super tough, and uh, arrow and lightweight. So, I, that's why I got this wheel. Sorry, 19,000 ringgit? Yeah. It was the wheels? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> is, yeah, but. <laughs> Do you have insurance on this bike? Yeah, I've been lectured quite a lot <laughs> by my friends 
I said, hey, Melvin, don't buy insurance. Ah. Uh, yeah, okay. yeah, I should. Like. Actually, to be honest, I have the insurance form on my desktop. I'm just like, you know. <laughs> oh my god, 19,000 ringgit for a few. Uh, sorry, did something go dark? Oh, shit. Okay. Crap. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Got USB hard but not. There you go. Um, sorry, my nose is super itchy, man. <laughs> Okay. All, all for the mask. Yeah, I tap on the mask. I find that. The the character is the face. You say hide the face. Up. Tap on aku. Price of the full bike? I think my full bike is touching sixty k already. Oh my 60, god. Sixty thousand ringgit. Uh. Yeah. What, sixty thousand ringgit. What does your wife say about that? Nothing. <laughs> okay. Bear in mind. Uh, like I always tell people, don't sell your kidney for your bike. And I'm not rich. I actually work really hard for this bike. My parents are never rich. My parents are standard middle income Chinese family who earn enough for the family to at least earn enough for the kids to go for college, right? We don't go US holiday every month, you know, or every other year, you know, we are just a moderate income. And I would say that it's because I work hard, I know where I need to invest. And for the past five years of cycling, when I started, I buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell, and I always trade up. And every year I put in some money, put in some money then, I also have a lot of wedding photography equipment. So it go to a point that when I want to start a YouTube channel, I told my wife, okay, I want to sell off everything. I got my 60,000 ringgit and I told uh, OCI they were launching this bike. Uh, it's just in time I put in a deposit and then it took about eight months to get this bike and I'm happy I was first to own this bike. I was so happy. Yeah. <laughs> um, what is your height and the frame size? Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I am 171 cm. My inseam is about 72, uh, so I have long body, short legs. Uh. Uh, this is uh, S, uh, size 51. Okay. Uh, um, <coughs> 60,000 ringgit bike, OSPW is missing. Okay, OSPW. I've tested OS OSPW. I don't get it. <laughs> I don't get it. You've tested which one? Uh, I tested the Morph. I didn't test the ceramic speed. La. Not so easy to get, la. but I tested the Morph. But to be honest, whether you test Morph or OSPW, I don't think the physics will run far. It's just gears. Maybe ceramic speed will give you better bearings. Is as far as it goes. In terms of material, this and that, I don't think it's going to go f like phenomenally far off. Even the bearings, probably the friction is going to be like 10, 20% or maybe 50% better from ceramic So to be honest, I'm not going to invest a lot on something just because it's a fad. So I did try an a OSPW. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe ceramic seat is really revolutionary. I don't know. But um, oh, talking about ceramic speed, by the way, this Zentis Mark III SL comes with ceramic speed bearing. I can say it's good. Lah. Okay, going back to OSPW. Ah. When I tested OSPW, when I changed the derailleur, right, the rear derailleur, it weighed about, I think, 20 gram or 18 gram more than the standard derailleur. When I did my climbs, everybody say it makes you feel like you have an extra gear. So it's supposed to save you 5 watts. Hmm. 5 watts away. Come on. So then I, I, I sold it and I said, okay, I'm not going to use an OSPW. I even tried curing. Okay, curing for me works. So in Singapore, uh, majority of people I interview has an OSPW, which makes my bike look like the weird one. <laughs> then those who are using OSPW, I will ask you why does that one second count in your ride? Because for me, I think you need to build the bike for you to be able to survive the journey. Mm. Right? OSPW is going to save you a few watts. There's so many people debunking OSPW anyway. So just read the numbers there. Yeah. So I'm not saying that you get it because it looks cool. It's definitely going to be a bit faster. Right? But uh, not, it doesn't work for me. Mm. Yeah. What will be your next upgrade on the bike? Okay. Um, up, upgrade on the bike, there's so many to say. Uh, so right now, I know you're going to ask me as well, what's the weight of the bike? So I'm just going to be very blunt with you. My bike weighs 7.8 kg. It's not the lightest bike. It's pretty light for a disc. Below it, I, I personally think. Yeah, I, I, now I think by default, a 7.5 kg is, your, is, the, is a good weight for a disc. Mine is 7.8. The reason why was when I first got that bike, when I first got this bike, it was actually 7.5. Uh, because I was running on tube, uh, Conti GP5K. Mm. Okay, uh, that, then also I was running on low carbon pedals. Uh, and the whole bike weighs at 7.5 kg. But then, when I add in the bike mounts and all this and all that, right? And then um, I also went for tubeless. And then also I changed to the Pro, uh, Pro, you know, Schwalbe 1 tires. It means I did not get the racing tire, I went a step below. Okay, I will explain to you later why. Okay, but after adding all this, uh, it increased the bike weight by 300 gram. So, why 300 gram? Is it worth the weight? I say, I will say, yeah. 
mainly because right i wanted a pedal that will last me forever and if you go for a dura ace car or, or, or look blade or whatever pedal right this is only like 20 gram heavier than them it's not worth the additional 300 400 ringgit so that's why i went for this and you want reliability because you don't want to cycle halfway and pecha mm. right my look has uh, look blade pecha before when i was cycling in putrajaya so i went for something a bit more reliable as for tubeless it works for me because i'm puncture king i think for six years of cycling last time i punctured close to about 10 times but since going tubeless i never had a puncture before for almost one and a half years that's a track record for me so far so good and i went for a heavier tire mainly because i wanted the uh, puncture resistant to be better and i find that whenever i use the pro one or a conti gp5k my my my, my lifespan of a tire is maybe about a year so hopefully this will last longer, but it's mainly for the puncture resistance. Hmm. So yeah. Okay. Upgrade? Uh, yeah. Okay, upgrade. Okay, I'll do a quick one on upgrade. I already plan to upgrade from 12 speed to 11 speed because that will already save me 500 gram. I plan to change uh, back, but if I'm really a weight mini, I'll probably change this to uh, tube. And I am tempted to change to, if you look at my Instagram, to the THM and THM uh, crank arm with the carbon tie chain ring because that will save me about another 200 gram if i do all that this bike will weigh 6.8 kg i did my calculation <laughs> i'm still thinking um what would be other your other dream bike besides the stock honestly right now it's a vilio uh, vilia zero slr mm. no s works uh, no s works no offense to s work fans i just see too many s works around Tinarello, madone uh, no offense to Pinarello, I just find your design a bit too bulky. <laughs> Madone, not Madone, Imonda. Because I tested it and I love it. Mm. So I like the Imonda, but it will be the Vila. If I had the money, it will be a Vila SLR right now. Because I have an aero bike, I want to get a bike with uh, thinner tubing. It mm. looks cool with aero wheels. So we'll move on to the Instagram Q&A. You guys want to ask Instagram questions, follow me on Instagram. So Melvin, are you ready? We have a couple of questions here. Actually, more than a couple. So actually, the first question I want to start off with is my friend Andrew, who was one of the very first interviewees on my channel. Mm. He asked me this morning, can you please ask Melvin Tan, is, is he faster than me? <laughs> okay, that question. Uh, is there any more question from there? Oh, that's it. Uh, that's the one. Uh, that's a lot of questions. Okay. Yes. Matter of speed uh, is about talent, you know, bakat, okay? So, my bakat is downhill. <laughs> I can hit 80 km pH or up to about 85 because of my weight. So, and my arrow bike lah. So, going downhill, I think I'll win him lah. Oh, wow, yeah. Actually, I've never gone any faster than 75. And in Singapore, there are not many no hills where you can try. go. Not, yeah, there are no hills for you to go up to 80, yeah. man. That's crazy. So, where is the route where you, you can blunt all, shoot all the way? It used to be uh, Lekas. Uh, Lekas, you have a very steep coming down. Uh, you can really sprint. Mm. Downhill is really fast. Huh? What is your usual cycling distance and the longest distance covered in one ride? My longest distance, let's go longest distance because I always, uh, I don't like that part. Huh? I think the longest did, ride I did was about 230km. Huh? Right close there, it's one of those Audex pink ride. Huh? Mm. Uh, I, I will do 300 one day, but I always say family comes first. If I can do a 300km and come back for dinner, I might do it. But most of the 300km always comes back around 10, so I won't do it. Uh, average ride is about 100 to 110 km a weekend plus my indoor trainer another 60 km maybe so mm. 160 km a, a week uh. okay mm. this is a, a roast this question is meant to be a roast uh, this bike is basically a rebranded Tardus Spark ah, Evo that's a good one yeah yeah that's a good question I was hoping someone asked me because I have a good answer for you so when they launched this uh, then there was a there was also a lot of, uh, you know news hitting about this being a Pardus bike, right? So then I, caught, I contacted Marcus Stock and asked him, hey, what's all this? La? So he has the answer for me. When Stock created the FRS G3, right, they are also changing their business direction where they want to compete on price competitiveness. If you look at Stock, uh, Stock bikes are not cheap, you know. They are boutique level, you know. A Stock mid-end bike uh, frame uh, will cost 20k and that is S-work territory, you know, correct? So then Marcus Stock wanted to change the, the pricing strategy. So then he, with the factory that they're manufacturing this bike, uh, stock, listen to me, uh, stock actually licensed Pardus to use the frame design mold to reduce the cost of manufacturing this frame. So Pardus actually used the stock mold 
not stop use Pado smoke, okay? But that's just the mold, not the carbon material, not the carbon signs, and not the carbon layout, just the frame. So this is still very stock. It's just that Pardos looks like it. Mm. And this answer was from Marcus Stock. And Pardos is a China company? Uh, yes. Okay. And to be honest, this is made in China. And I think there's nothing wrong about things making in China. This Kabuno is done made in China. This Bond is made in China as well. I, I think. <laughs> la, I, don't, I can't remember. <laughs> la, but, sorry, uh, Bond. <laughs> but everything's made in China. Rafa's made in China. So why? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just that whether you're QC and the people behind it actually put in the effort in R&D, that's more important. Speaking of expensive re uh, frame, so this is my own personal question. Um, is it worth the money for someone to spend 60,000 ringgit on a bike or a polygon is just good enough? No, don't spend 60,000 ringgit on a bike. <laughs> I think it's, it's a matter of needs and wants and what you can afford, lah, right? I have friends who use a 5,000 ringgit bike uh, and still go faster than me, right? The only reason why I bought the stock because I like the brand, I like the bike shop and, uh, and I can afford it, right? If you can't, don't. I think a good priced bike to get is around 15,000 ringgit is as high as an average user should be. Unless you can afford it, go higher all the way. But 15K is a good sweet pot, spot. Lah. Are you sponsored by stock? Uh, no, I'm partially sponsored by stock. <laughs> partially. But that said, it's not because, uh, that said, it's not because I buy it because my first Air Fast G1, I fully paid for it. It's just because when I started the YouTube journey, uh, it got traction and it helped me a lot in getting the things I want cheaper price. Uh. Mm. Your wheels are extremely unique. There are so many questions on the wheels, so let's go to wheels questions. Would you go for deeper section wheels? The deepest I went was with the Campact Nolo uh, WTO 60, I think. 60, right? That's 60 mm. or 65? 60. Uh, really good, but sluggish on the rolling hills. You see, uh, when you are a heavy rider, uh, you need to always take advantage of rolling hill. Coming down, sprinting up, coming down, sprinting up. And if, let's say, a lighter rider like Umpa versus me, right, on rolling hill, uh, I should be able to catch up or go faster with him because there's always a physical momentum on rolling hills, right? So when you use a WTO uh, or anything that is heavier, right, I feel that it's very sluggish to pick up to maintain in peloton. So for me, the sweet spot for aero wheels is always between 42 to 55, and weight should be around 1.5 kg below. So that's my sweet spot for wheels. Uh. Mm. Are these type of wheels stronger than traditional spoke wheels? How does it perform on rough surfaces? Oh yeah, man, that's a good question. So I got these carbon uh, spokes is because you do ever need to chew it again. So you buy a spoke wheels, right? Especially those, uh, uh, those, those metal spoke wheels, right? you always have to chew it because there's so many spokes, it's like a guitar string. It will sometimes go out of tune, right? But carbon spokes like this, uh, it's maintenance-free one. It's really maintenance-free. And whether is it tougher or not, to be honest, don't underestimate carbon bikes. Uh, people say titanium lasts forever. I will say carbon bikes just as much. The only difference between carbon or titanium and aluminium is aluminium and titanium, you hit it, it bends. Carbon, you hit it, it cracks. Don't hit it long. <laughs> what hubs are these? Uh, this is ceramic speed bearings with a, uh, I think it's just a Zentis collaboration with DT Swiss hub, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. I think so. Um, how is the wheel set after so many kilometers? And how many kilometers on this wheel set? Um, I did, I got this bike last year, uh, December, and I hit about 8,000 km already. Um, so if you ask me, this wheel set, the biggest concern I had with carbon wheel set is super stiff and bumpy and, and very harsh on the road, but okay lah. Um, I find because uh, the, the, the tubeless and the frame itself absorbs the vibration enough to outweigh this, this wheels are stiffness because this wheel is very stiff. Hmm. So it's, it's good for me. Uh, I've done Audax, I've done, if you look at my YouTube, I've done gravel, I've done climbs with full of concrete uh, stuff. I, I, I survive, I'm okay, and I'm heavy rider. The wheels didn't break. Uh. Hmm. Do the Zentis wheels actually stay true forever? It's, it's maintenance free. It's supposed to. Uh, if it's gonna be untrue, it's probably cracked somewhere. So you probably, probably better get it checked. Yeah. Have you ever been scared that your rim will just snap? When I first bought it, yes. But after I used it confidently, if you look at some of my channel, I've been through really harsh roads. Uh. I really punished this bike one. Even though it looks clean, I really punished the bike. Full confidence on this, this baby. So your frame is called the Stock Air Fast. G3 Pro. Right. The question is, is it because they, the way they named this frame, is it because they were not sure whether it's fast or is it called Air uh, Fast? Air Fast. <laughs> <laughs> fast, that's a good question. No, I think, um, don't mind me, Marcus Stock, if you're watching this. Uh, Germans are always quite boring. Germans are not very creative. But Germans are engineers. Like They are like, like Asians for the Jap Japanese for Asians. Germans are 
the Europeans for Germans, they are just engineering specialists, right? So when they, they to be honest, if you ask me, stock have a very distinctive design that not many people like. But I find it because it's distinctive, it has that German touch to it, right? So I like it. And the way they name it air fast is because it's air fast aerobike. Mm. It's not air fast. Uh. Right. <laughs> when you ride this stock bike, does the stocks go up? <laughs> <laughs> I would say that um, uh, in Malaysia, I mean, to be honest, stock don't really do much marketing, which is quite sad. La. They have their marketing team, they do it. La. But if you talk about marketing giants for bikes, la, it's always specialized. La. Specialized is like the Apple iPhones of the bike industry, right? Stock is probably an unknown brand, but that makes, that has a, a, a attachment, I mean, that has an attraction to it that I like, right? So um, when I start writing this and I start doing YouTube for it, I've seen that some, many of my subscribers asked me and the sales did pick up in Malaysia. And I have many inquiries from German, Germany, US, Dubai, Japan, ask, uh, even Australia and Singapore asking me about stock bikes. I give them my honest opinion, the good, the bad. And also uh, for Malaysia, we have uh, Alif Sata, a huge uh, ambassador for stock. He helped build up the brand as well. Um, so yeah. Mm. You do a lot of right vlogs. How do you set up your camera? I should have brought it. Uh, so I have... Okay, um, so the reason why I've stopped being a crazy weight weenie is mainly because I gave up on it. My camera equipment alone probably weighs me down by about 400 to 500 gram. I have a DJI Osmo and this is what I want to, if DJI, you guys are watching this, right? DJI Osmo Action 2 is rubbish. Why you all do it like that? How can the action camera be not full waterproof with mics and battery attachment correctly done, right? So I've, I, w I got the DJI Osmo Action 1. I still find that Action 1 is still the best camera. Um, so why do I use the DJ Osmo Action 1? Because I find the workflow easy. I find the camera affordable. That's why I never touch GoPro. GoPro wide view is good, but it's just way too expensive as an action camera, right? Why I did not do 360 camera? I find the workflow too cumbersome at video editing uh, process time. Lah. So then I have a camera mount to a chest harness. I'm using the Stuntman chest harness, which I bought from US. I, I bought it from Amazon. Uh, they, uh, they make the best harness. Uh. And with an uh, attachment here to aim up because I wanted my camera closer to my chin. If I can, I want my camera to be at my eyeball, but <laughs> it's as close as I can get for comfort level. I used to mount on the head, but 200 km, huge pain on the, on the neck. Then I have another handheld uh, DJI Osmo lot that does all the angle shots and this and that. Lah. So two cameras? Two cameras minimum. Right. And uh, from, I think it's your follower or my follower. Hi Melvin, what do you do to afford this bike? Uh, save money well. Work hard. Uh, I think this is a question very hard to answer you. La. To be honest, I think the easiest way to answer you is if you work in a company and you and company pays you a thousand ringgit and you give them a thousand ringgit, then you're worth a thousand ringgit. La. But if a company pays you a thousand ringgit and you deliver hundred thousand ringgit, the company will up your salary. That's mm -hmm. number one. Number two, on the weekend, turn your passion that generates income. Why waste time not making money? Right? And because of all that, with six years of savings, I bought this bike with my hard-earned cash, you know. I didn't ask money from my parents. In fact, I started earning money when I was in, sec in, in high school selling, you know, Magic the, with the, what, Magic the Gathering Magic trading cards. Yeah. yeah, I still, I used to make, in high school, uh, age 14, 15, I used to make 2, 3k extra in 2, 3 months, you know. It's, it's just make money, la. it's fine money. <laughs> um, my fiancé behind the camera, can I buy another bike? Oh, she's giving me the stare, so okay, now why not? And my wife said, can you know? <laughs> uh, next question is, you are or you were sponsored by Red White Bibs? Series again is brought to you by Red White. Red White Bibs, uh, shout out to Red White. Red White, send me this beep. This ride is brought to you by Red White Bib. The question is, how are Red White Bibs honestly? Okay, I, I, I already covered this in my channel many times already. I wasn't sponsored Red White Beep, but I've used Red White Beep for two years before I even mentioned it. So, Red White Beep, uh, a lot, of, actually Marcus was the one, uh, if you see in my channel, right, Marcus, in my group is very mixed one. My group got people within the industry, got people who are in, uh, in, in the bike industry, got people who are Ironman, triathletes, uh, full Ironman, uh, not just normal Ironman, uh, full Ironman, triathletes, uh, and influencers in, in our group of cyclists, uh, right, and racers, this and that. So Marcus being a crazy triathlon and Ironman, right? He actually did all, he's also a super, what do you call it? A super Odex, super Ron, Rondania. So they did all the 200km all the way to 1200km in a year, right? So 
he said that he has used ASOS, which is supposed to be the, the best bib and cost about 800 to 1000 ringgit. Then when he used Red White, which cost about 500 ringgit, it works for him. And he influenced the whole group starting buying Red White. And because that time Red White had some reviews in Road CC as well, uh, that was close to about five, six years ago, five years ago. So then the group started buying Red White and I also bought, I used it, we liked it. The price was reasonable because uh, bib wise, I'm not that experienced. The only expensive bit I tried was Rafa and I like Rafa Core. I just find Rafa call the material very fast, become thinning, that you see your backside. Ah. And Red White so far lasted the longest, and it works for us, the price is good, and hey, Yuva, you're awesome, so you're a nice guy, so <laughs> I support you. So yes, Red White Beep is good. I forgot to ask this question, so what do you not like about your bike? I hate this gold decal. Um, honestly, Marcus, if I were you, I won't try to make the bike look designed if you don't have a design team. That's the only comment I have. Else than that, this bike is excellent. Thank God it's, it's blue. It used to be, uh, Air Force Generation 1 used to be blue, you know, because uh, uh, I know uh, stock, their, their branding and all is blue. So they used to have uh, blue in, uh, hidden colors around here and there. So when I got my Air Force G1, uh, I, I, I sticker all the blue and become black. It looks beautiful. Yeah. Uh, gold is okay, acceptable. I... Um, oh, oh, one more thing. Yeah. I wish that there was a, uh, on the handlebar, I like my handlebar being narrow at 40, right? If can, I want 38 because I find it very comfortable and more arrow. Uh, but at that size, uh, normally integrated stem uh, is only at 100, even for Velia and most other brands as well. So I wish they had a 110 with a 40. That's, why. That's what I don't like about integrated cockpits because you can't get the right dimensions, yeah. right? Mm, uh, I don't like that. that. That's the only downside. That is all the questions I have. Uh, last chance to make any last statements to my viewers and your viewers about your bike or anything you want to talk about. Why he wear masks? Uh? <laughs> Scary, no? <laughs> like wrestling. Uh. Uh, I think I think end of the day, um, to all of you who are watching this channel, I think Umpa is creating a very good content. Uh, he's allowing people in the community to talk, which is sometimes lack of it. Uh, you know, people don't have a, a medium to talk. I think that's, that's, that's valuable. Uh, and to all those cyclists out there, I think uh, be kind to all other cyclists, whether you are an average 40 km per hour rider or your average 25 km per hour. Uh, it's good to lower down your speed to bring slower riders to your speed and come to a medium where everybody can enjoy the ride together. Uh, and one thing I like about my group is we regroup a lot of times and we try to stay in a peloton and I always allow the group last 10 km go all out break apart is okay so that allows the right community to be you know present uh. and also to all the bike shops who are watching this uh, I, there are so many politics in bike shop that's why I actually started this channel you know I find bike shops sometimes forget their customer they rather think about oh I'm distributing this product you know I don't want to sell to you because you are too near to me but maybe the customer want to buy from them. So, you know, work, work around it, right? I think bike shops can do better in terms of customer service, in terms of pushing their products. Uh, there are a lot of bike shops that sells the wrong size and sells the wrong expectation. I think that has to change. And also, uh, I feel that a lot of cyclists is overwhelmed when they want to come to cycling because you, you know you're a cyclist. To get the right bike to fit you is so technical, it's so difficult, right? So that's why I created my channel. I help a lot of cyclists. I get to close, close about two to three new newbies asking me every other week. And I try my best. Uh, Genie Boy, if you're watching this, yeah. Yeah, what? my man, Genie Boy? Genie Boy. <laughs> Genie Boy Cycles? Yeah, Genie Boy Cycles. Oh, and really? He, and he messaged me, hey, Melvin, what you think? Hey, this one's good. good. Wow. Yeah. So, so okay. I'm so happy that I created a channel which allows people to freely message me and I freely answer you in my personal humble point of view. And uh, again, I'm not a professional cyclist, but I have experience and I share where I can. I might not be right. Whatever I share with you is what works for me. So, yeah. Thank you, man. And, and, and sorry, Genie Boy Cycles, uh, what bike does he ride? <laughs> uh, yeah, so when Genie Boy asked me what bike to get, of course, I used to get stock. Uh. <laughs> but then, he, then, of course, I gave him some alternative. Uh. So he bought a track. Uh. I think he got a track in Monda because I also did a review for track in Monda in one of my series. Uh. So then he bought a track in, in Monda. He's been cycling. Uh. I'm, I'm, I've yet to ride with Genie Boy yet. Uh. He, he did Jo me, uh, but I enjoy him because I want to do 100km. Uh. So Genie Boy faster do 100km and follow me. Uh. Oh, yo. <laughs> yo, Genie Boy needs to be on my channel, man. The next time I come yeah, to Malaysia. Why not? Why not? <laughs> why not? Uh, okay, Melvin, that is the end. Thank you so much, man. You've been a wonderful guest and... Uh, 
I hope to see you again, man. The next yeah, time we ride awesome, together. You, you, awesome. you, you come to Singapore, I bring you to, to ride all flats only. La. No, 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 60 km, like, 80 like km flat, per hour. I like slow. I don't know why my friends <laughs> like fast and hills. Uh, yeah, so thank you to you, the wife, and thank you to you. Yeah, hey, thanks, thanks, thanks. Okay, now I have a question for you, though. Yeah. When I saw Umpa, why Umpa face look fat but so skinny like that? <laughs> eh? So why what's with the face? The face ah, wow, you're putting me on my spot on my own channel, man. Uh the reason is I want to keep the curiosity. So if you guys want to see my real face, it's actually on my members' channel. You just have pay three bucks and I have right vlogs there and behind the scenes and stuff. So pay yeah, to pay three dollars. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, who S2 pays S2 for S2. all this gear, man? I have true, to drive true, here. True. Hey bro, you're how yeah. damn far from my house, man. Yeah, true, true, true. <laughs> yeah, so so to all of you who have subscribed my channel and Umpa's channel, I think you guys are best. Uh, for you who like and share, you guys are even better. For you that's actually paid uh, him at his <laughs> Patreon, you guys the best. I haven't started Patreon yet, I'm still thinking about it, but I felt Patreon has just too much work for it, la, so I haven't started yet. I think uh, for now, I won't, I'll just, yeah, just go with the flow. La. Actually, but it's not really Patreon, it's like a YouTube members portal. Membership, right? Yeah. Uh, is it? You uh, can consider, man, you got 5k stuff, I think you can do it. Yeah, they, uh, yeah YouTube are asking me, uh, but I haven't do it yet, I guess it's just too much work. Yeah. But the other day, yeah, support the channel, it helps us create more content. La. I think yeah. that's good. La. Yeah, you guys follow Melvin, man, my Singaporean viewers probably know you as well, I got so many questions. Yeah, that's weird, you know, even my colleagues say, hey Melvin, you're doing a YouTube channel, one of my Singapore colleagues say that you're, you're quite popular there, is it? Is it? Eh? <laughs> uh, okay, then, then I, when I go to shopping mall, also people People stop me, hey Melvin, are you Melvin? Can I take a picture with you? Okay. <laughs> so yeah, so it's a weird thing that I did not expect, uh, but it's fun, uh, it's fun. Uh. Last question, sorry, I know we're gonna wrap up. Uh, Singapore Pakute or Klang Pakute? Uh, careful, uh, this one. You're, you might lose your Singaporean or Malaysian subscribers. <laughs> okay, just to be very clear, Klang Pakute isn't that great. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> KL Pakute, the best Jalan Ipo. <laughs> oh, uh, that's, that's okay. random. <laughs> then when you talk about Singapore, Singapore Pakute, and uh, Malaysia Pakute, uh, okay, let's say Malaysia, uh, let's talk about the combat between Malaysia and Singapore, uh, okay? Let's be very fair here. Malaysians will always say Malaysian Pakute is better. Singaporeans will always say Singaporean Pakute is better. Same thing with uh, Lo Sang, same thing with Chow Fan, chicken rice and everything. Mainly because convenient law, it's closer for me to eat here, of course, here better, uh, right? So I would say Malaysians and Singaporeans, uh, where you eat, as long as you eat, you support your local local restaurants that is more important than which one is better. La. So let's be politically correct. La. Wow. Support your local bike shop. <laughs> okay bro, we really got to, we got to end this. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, it's almost almost one hour man. <laughs> hey, tengo until last. Uh, all the way one hour. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay bro, thank you so okay, much again, man. Yeah, uh, you guys, see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye. God bless. <laughs>